homies, it's me, Carrie, your horticulture homegirl, and I am back with another video. Uh, this one's going to be a two-parter. The first one's going to be a little long. It's going to be an introduction to all the friends. Um, so, yeah, couple things. Um, super comfortable and casual always. We're friends now, so I'm deep conditioning, enjoying my little breakfast smoothie, um, this is frozen mixed berries, one apple, some almond milk, and a little tiny bit of maple syrup, not pancake, maple syrup, um, because I have a sweet tooth. So that's what's happening there. Um, so I hope you all are having a good time, settle in, and we're going to have a little chat. I'm going to try to introduce everybody in chronological order and give a little background about why I chose that particular plant, why I love it, etc. So here we go. As I stated in the first video, my very first, oh my gosh, <gasps> my very first baby was this beautiful jade peperomia. Um, you see she's a little bit leggy, which just means there's these kind of big gaps in between where the leaves are growing. She's supposed to be super full. Um, there was a little bit of a root rot situation, so I had to trim away some of the leaves. The beautiful thing about um, this particular peperomia is super easy to propagate, which means to just clip and make new babies. So you'll see I have quite a few of those around. Um, so, uh, but also new leaves are just going to pop right out. You see there's all over, they are everywhere. So she'll be thick and juicy again in no time. So that is first plant ever. Ugh. Oh, core strength. Okay. Um, and since we're talking about propagations, I usually propagate in water. Um, she's has babies super fast, but these were a few cuttings, healthy cuttings. And you see, I'm going to use some terms. There's actually some variegation on these. So the original peperomia was, um, darker because at my mom's house and at my old place, um, there wasn't as much light. There's a lot of light here. So you see there's this beautiful variegation, which just means some variation in color. So you see there's some kind of dark green and light green, and that's super pretty. So she's also having a good time. Um, and then this little extender, I think is the equivalent of like a flower, um, but she's healthy. She's doing great. So that, this is a little baby of that. Um, next, 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 next. Oh, okay. <sighs> Am I going to do this? Are we doing this? Um, I'm going to come back to those. I'll show you guys <laughs> my succulent boxes in a minute. They're just exceptionally heavy and I had to figure out how to even make that work. So we're going to skip that for a minute. Um, up next, coming to the show. Ooh. Oh gosh. Holy cow. Whew. Okay. So up next is this beautiful, massive spider plant. This, just plucking off some dead stuff. This beauty was rescued um, from a supermarket actually. Um, you know in the little section where they have like the get well plants. This, she, she, <laughs> um, she was on clearance and was dead and sad. Um, been repotted a couple times, about two years old. And as you can see now, she is huge and beautiful. Um, there are some pups coming off. So eventually these will be spider plants all their own. And also, I don't know if you guys can see, but she's flowering too. 
So she is very happy and having a good time. So this is our spider plant. So she's massive and heavy. Ooh, put you back out of the way. All right, I'm gonna have plant in my smoothie. Up next, we have money, 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 money. We have a money tree. And this guy, I think, actually came from maybe Trader Joe's, possibly, probably. Um, and a funny story, the money tree actually came, let me lift up, actually came with a braided um, trunk. The little wires that they had it tied up with just... I don't know, it looked like it was constricting and hurting it, so I took those off a long time ago. So as you can see, as it's grown, it's become unbraided, but look how beautiful and healthy and huge this big baby is. And you see, there's lots of little, little plants coming out, little newbies coming out of that one. So super happy and healthy, that is our money tree it's like a little umbrella you can live under her okay it's in my eye um up next we oh hold on oh no i'm making a, a disaster all over my lap okay hold on Whew. up next we have the beautiful and majestic Christmas cactus. Um, I picked her, this was just another one of those plants that reminded me of my Nana. Um, her favorite color was red. So she's in a red pot and um, I don't know how we lucked out with one this beautiful. Maybe Nana's just watching over her. Um, but she last uh, winter, she bloomed three times, actually, between November and February. Just big, massive, bright, bright red, um, almost the color of this pot, beautiful blooms. But in the spring and summer, you see, she's just a growing, the easiest plant ever. She loves to be left alone, minds her own business, uh, likes to be root bound, which means um, the roots tightly packed. So she's actually only been repotted once since I purchased her two and a half years ago. Um, and then she'll live in here for a few years to come. So that is the Christmas cactus. Put you there. Next on the docket. I'm trying to do, 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 do. You know what? We're just going to go with what's convenient. I'll still give the story, but the chronology thing is already getting on my nerves. <laughs> so we're going to move along from that. So this one actually belongs in my honey's office. Um, I got this for him. He is not a plant lover. He tolerates my passions. Um, but this is an... African elephant bush and it's literally a little mini like succulent tree uh, there are two in this pot um, that just came their little nursery pot so I just stuck them together and then I had this this really pretty little bowl situation to put them in um, another one a succulent easy let it get dry as bone it lives in his windowsill and is pretty much ignored but super cute Okay, then we have, uh, this is a fun one, another peperomia. Um, one thing about me, you're probably not going to get a lot of Latin names from me. From me. Um, that's not my ministry, but I will give you uh, layman's terms and kind of casual vernacular, I guess, um, terms, they're still, they're still gonna be super easy to find. So this one is a string bean or green bean peperomia. And funny story about this, 
had this guy for ever um living in our kitchen for a while just kind of all over the place and was thriving um when we moved put it in a window and as i started getting more plants i just kind of thought that it would be easier to put them on a watering schedule at the old place with fewer plants they all got, but got ignored until they were bone dry and kind of started to to droop a little bit um started watering this one was actually in um like another little group of like a succulent box horrible case of fungus snacks happened took the whole thing out on the patio i didn't even couldn't even emotionally handle it at the time so took it out on the patio and um literally forgot that it was out there just took it out of the the fungus net party and literally put it in an empty pot and just left it out there keep in mind it's been over 90 degrees for what feels like a month at least in baltimore so it's been hot out on the patio no water no nothing barely any dirt are you kidding me it's huge um and it was starting to yellow and fall apart. So I was all but ready to just call this one a loss. Um, I happened to go out on the patio and take a look at it and it was green and huge and flourishing. And yeah, apparently this guy likes to be dry and in the sun and left alone. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you so silly. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was an episode of Family Matters, and I'm not sure of the context, but Carl was talking to Harriet about like being a helicopter mom, and he told he told this story about how seals, mama seals, sometimes roll over and crush their babies. And he was telling um, Harriet that that's basically what she was doing to the children and that they were being mother smothered. So that has become like my term for loving your plants, but almost doting on them too much, loving on them too much. Don't mother smother your plants. So this guy likes to be left alone. So I'm glad I didn't throw it away. Uh, the bell of the ball, this beauty, the Monstera, she's so fancy, and what a treat, our first fenestrated leaf. Fenestration just means those holes. And you see some of her original leaves are just darker, but no fenestration. But now we're getting these beautiful Swiss cheese leaves. Um, this one is also known as the Swiss cheese plant. So um, just a little kind of throw in tip. These things will get huge and massive. I've seen them for like $150 at the store. $10. Buy them small. Part of plant love is watching them grow and be healthy and learning what they love. So $10 instead of $100, I will take paying a tenth of the price. No problem. So that is that beauty queen. Right over there. Next, we have a Dracaena. I think Dracaena reflexa. That is what I saw on Google. So we're going to go with that answer. Um, another one bought her pretty small um you can see she's still even in her nursery pot um brought her pretty small paid five dollars and you see she is just thriving and beautiful in one of my favorite little planters um from trader joe's around um halloween they had these beautiful candy skull um style planters so um this Funny little friend has housed many a plant. We'll never get rid of this beautiful planter, but for now, his hair is Dracenia hair. Very pretty, very easy to care for. Okay. 
Another rescue! This one, our Swedish Ivy, was on the clearance rack at a certain big box store that we will not mention. Um, but this one was on clearance. Um, originally, it was like $13 on the pot, marked down to $5.99. Um, had to do a lot of pruning. It is a risk picking plants that are on their last leg only because you may not be sure why. Um, I knew what to check and kind of knew enough to know that she was just thirsty and sunburned. So um, did lots of trimming, a new pot, got rid of all that old dirt that was kind of just full of debris and all of that. I didn't want to um, invite another fungus gnat situation. But look, she is perking right on up. Lots of little new growth tucked in there. So that is our Swedish Ivy. Hello. Okay. Ugh. We have this beauty, my favorite color, hot pink. We have a pink Aglionema. And I think this is actually called um, Sweetheart or Valentine something like that, something to do with love. And um, this was actually a cutting from one of my mom's plants. So I took a single leaf cutting and look at this beauty. Um, she got a little too much sun and that was my fault. Um, that's why she is so dark, but also um, it's kind of, you see some burnt bits. So she's good. We've moved her around a little bit. And she's a very fancy lady. She's very fancy. All right. Now we have my Nana's favorite. This beauty, the Syngonium or the Arrowhead plant. This one, again, I think is a Syngonium confetti. You can see there's like some little touches of pink in there. Um found her on sale at a, um, a hardware store. And the great thing too, and I'll, again, I'll come back to this, is that um, like clothes, plants have seasons. So right now, all of the kind of tropical plants, because it is getting to the end of the summer into fall, to make room for the fall plants coming in, a lot of these beautiful tropi tropical um, plants are on sale or on clearance. So make sure you check that out as well. You can really find some beautiful, healthy, healthy plants on sale. On sale does not necessarily mean dead or dying. You see, she is flourishing. There's all kinds of new growth in there. Color beautiful, nothing burnt. I mean, just spectacular. So there she is. Um, coming around, coming around. We'll go here. This little cutie is mother of time. Got her at um a farmer's market, and she's just cute. This was another friend that was in the fungus gnat pot, and um, so she had to be kind of separated, disinfected the soil, gave her a rinse, washed her out, and she's just cute. So I don't necessarily use it for, for herbs. I just, I love these kind of like, there is perlite going everywhere, but I just kind of like these, these ground cover plants because they're viney and they do their own thing, kind of, kind of quirky and have a mind of their own, like me. So mother of time she's just a little cutie oh. next we have stone crop another farmer's market finds um you see she's looking a little a little sparse a little rustic um she's recovering from an infestation of spider mites it seems like I saw nothing. I thought I was good about checking. So 
saw a couple of webs and then just started seeing like clusters of spider mites, actually. Checking now, you, you get in the habit, you see I was like zoning out, you get in the habit of just checking. Once it happens, you become like a crazy person about it. Um, so yeah, keeping a close eye on her, just making sure all is good. But um, you see, she's another variegated variety, not really showing much because she was kind of unhealthy. Um, but as she gets bigger, um, there's supposed to be more variegation and even I think some bright yellow flowers. So this is one that we'll keep an eye on together, okay? All righty. Next, we have the ice plant. Another, I feel like I've picked out all of the plants that I've almost killed at once. So, <laughs> we have an ice plant, and an ice plant is in the succulent family. You see these big kind of chunky, juicy leaves. Um, just overwatered her a little bit, so she got kind of like sad and, and, and wilty. Um, but you see, she's getting nice and, and sturdy and hardy again. Got lots of new growth. Um, so she's doing fine. And uh, when she is healthy, the most magnificent, bright, 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 bright pink um, little flowers pop out um, and, and look for the sun. So beautiful. Can't wait for her to get happy again. And then when she has some flowers, we're just going to come, come visit again. So she did bloom when I first purchased her. Mother smothered. I loved her a little too much, watered her a little too much. But that's okay. She's going to come back. We're optimistic around here. Oh, hold on. We got to do the wrap around. Ooh. Holy frankincense and myrrh. Okay. Whew. I'm literally out of breath. This beauty is a purple heart wandering jew i hope that is not offensive to anybody um there is a latin name sure purple heart wandering jew um and i mean the beauty this one has a takeover spirit this is three plants that look like 20 but um oh so beautiful um, you see these really pretty blooms and yeah, um, I know that some people hang theirs just because we're in an apartment. I am not trying to risk not getting my security deposit back by ripping out the ceiling. So I think what I think what I'm going to do is maybe look into getting like a birdcage stand or something like that. If you guys have any tips, let me know. But I definitely don't want to hang it from the ceiling. I know there are safe ways to do it. My dad is the handiest handyman I've ever known. I just don't want to risk it. Um, and uh, she thick. This is another one that is heavy. Um, so yeah, I just don't want to risk any damage. So that is our beautiful Purple Heart Wandering Jew. Oh my gosh. I didn't sign up for the extra workout, I assure you of that. Next, another friend from Mama's collection. This is our snake plant. And I think this particular one is called a black coral snake plant. Um, she's just pretty. Um, I acquired this one because my mom has a snake plant that is literally as tall as I am. It's a, it's a five footer. Um, and this offshoot literally pushed itself out of the dirt. Um, it was so ready to come out. So this is actually just one big offshoot that just pushed itself out. Um, I think it was curled. It was a little over, over water. Not much though. Um, not enough for root rot or anything like that. So yeah, there's some snake plant with a little flamingo because you know, we're real Baltimore around here. So that is that. I am like, I've literally buried myself in my plants. So 
things are about to get real interesting, but that's okay. That's okay. Up next, we have, you know what? Let's do it like this. Behind me, since we're doing plants I've liberated from my mom's house. Oof. Let me make sure you guys can see the, the top. Let's, we'll unwrap her for the sake of fun. So, this beauty was my first propagation ever um my mom has a beautiful golden pothos and um i clipped one little leaf right there right there and woo she is gorgeous um as you can see she's been getting a lot more light that's why the um the leaves at the top are not only bigger but have those beautiful splashes of gold. Um, again, that is variegation, and that's just from being loved on it in the sun. So I have um, staked her up, and yeah, so I'll redo that later, but she's fine hanging low. I just like to stake it so she gets lots of sun. And because once you grow one pothos, she needs friends we have this big one um another super cheap I, oh it's in a different basket um but probably like 10 bucks um 15 dollars is definitely the most if that that i've paid for any individual plant so she's beautiful um as you can see she's already starting to vine and spread out but yay i can't wait for her to grow and have lots lots more um Okay, I got to get up again. Hold on. We have basil. I don't even eat basil. Well, like, cook with it. Not the fresh kind. If you guys have some great recipes, let a sister know. Um... I took Travis to my favorite um, farmer's market. We went together for lunch, actually. And um, I saw this beauty hanging and she, probably about the height of this one right here. So mm, maybe two thirds of the size that it is now. Um, just bushy basil but i guess tree basil would be more appropriate so she's just huge um and pretty and thriving um another one easy to grow i just kind of dig in and pull out the dead leaves they kind of sometimes die on the inside because they're not getting as much light but holy cow she's so pretty she's so pretty so that is my basil I hope I'm still even in frame. So we just gonna start pushing things, pushing things away. <sighs> I did not think this through guys. I did not think this through. I told y'all we are homies now. So y'all are getting authentic carry and doing things on a whim, you know, guilty. Y'all, don't, don't laugh at me. This is our tomato plant that doesn't tomato. Um, bought a tomato plant from the supermarket, mom's market that we love. Um, so far, we've had one tomato and a lot of branch. Um, I've done the whole cut the pups off thing. Oh, gosh. Pups are these things um maybe it's not meant for the indoors put it on the patio um another one that i was just gonna like charge to the game but um travis travis was the one that said no let's keep it so we may just have a tomato tree in our home i don't know if you guys oh gosh i don't know if you guys can see i hope it's not like messing up the focus but we do have another little tomato trying to come in so we may get two tomatoes a year 
from this guy, but um, almost as tall as I am at this point. I'm not sure where this is going, but we got a tomato plant growing in our living room. Hi. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to put you over there. Um, all right, so we're coming down to the home stretch, but I got to make a little room because the next two are big. BRB! All right. Um, I'm not even sure if I can. This is Mother of Time. And another one inherited from my mama. One cutting. And you see she needs two steaks. Um, my steaks have foil on them. I almost impaled myself through the neck. Um, not paying attention one day to water and leaning over. So I need like warning signs danger don't stab yourself um so yeah oh she smells so good a little bit citrusy um another one don't cook with her at all so um if you like time we got lots of it she just grows and grows and grows another one that minds her business easy beautiful mother of time hello Oops, oh, that dang tomato plant. I'm coming! Ugh, core strength. And we have a yeah, 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 yucca. I'm trying to stay away because these ends are very sharp. Very sharp. Okay. This is our yucca. Beautiful. Um, another mine's its business plant. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. It, there are some, if you can see, like some white specks. Um, before I was sure how to deal with fungus gnats, I brought some spray that did nothing except leave weird white spots on my friend. Um, so I've been going through with the wet rag and literally individually, like it's, it's hard to get off cleaning each one. Um, but that's a job all on its own. So I still have a few more to go, but, uh, yeah.